Yo. 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 So. So, I heard. So. Task Force B is taking down that pig face motherfucker. Yeah. Comrade Silver is just helping out the Brotherhood whenever he. Uh, when he's around. Uh, he's not around right now. He's kind of taking a nap. You know, he's totally, he's totally around, you know, he, he's totally around, just, you know, you know, he's maybe a little tired, because last, because yesterday he was pulling, he was pulling, like, double duty, so, you know, right now he's just probably sitting down, you know, chilling, no, no more, you know, no other questions about Comrade or Silver, that's all I'm saying. Prime. Stop, please. Stop. Anyways, so, uh, Mel, Melly, you got anything you need to say? Uh, I think it's a little, I think it's kind of weird and kinky that, uh, you know, Rangiku wants to put the devil in a cell. I mean, I've been wanting, I've been wanting, I've been wanting Bubsy to do that for a while. I, dude, I, we don't just have a cell I can just put you in. Us, we can just be in and we can, you know, it's, yeah. But I am thinking about it. You gonna do it for my birthday? Oh, I'm gonna do a lot of things for my birthday. But we ain't, we ain't gonna sit here and talk about that, Melly. Not here. Not here. Besides, we're at the, we're, besides, we're at our freaking hexagonal table. This is where the business, this is where the business is put down. You sure this is where the business is put down? I, I seem to recall. I seem to recall last night. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, come on, you. Come on. Bugsy, Melly, you guys gotta fuck. You guys had to really fuck on this table. Is that what we really see? Y'all fucking on this table. Just like, God damn. Where did you guys? Was it near my spot? Just, just, just be honest with me, please. It was in the middle. Eh, oh, fuck. Man, you guys better sanitize this whole entire table. We know how drippy. We know how drippy Melly gets. Well, guilty. And Mr. And Mr. And Mr. You know. The word that starts with B and ends with key. <laughs> <laughs> I am my own, I am my own boo, I am, I am my own boo machine if you get my drift. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, enough of the, enough of the, re, enough of the crass remarks, folks. So. So. We, we're, you know, everything's working out with Odessa. We can't complain. Yeah, technically, technically, us playing the council members are sort of capitalists, to an extent. Not because we love money, it's more of like, what we can do with the money. You know, so. And, um, we usually, we usually chip in, we usually chip in every week to get a big sum of money to send nation. You know, to help them out with whatever they need. More, more than what Demo Man ever did. I swear to God, you know, you know, um, y'all remember? Do you guys remember when uh, Demo Man basically said he wasn't gonna do anything for Sin Nation because he's like he's mad at the fact that they all attacked him when literally they were under the spell of Vlad. So that should have made Demo Man actually want to help them because he should feel a little bit bad about the fact that he. That the fact they slaughtered most of them, and guess who stepped up? We fucking did. We fucking did because no one else would. Well, not no one else would, but we we volunteered. That's why we hate Demo Man so much because we, he may have called us evil, but we care about the community more than he ever did. You know, it's all about. It's all about that unity, you know? Something that Delman never really understood. 
They always had friends, but friends was always like, friends was literally always his way of saying, yeah, you're my friends until you fuck up. You're my soldier right now, but you, but we're friends. Man, when's the last time, Demo, when was the last time before we, before we banished Demo Man to the darkest, dankest pits of Double's hell, did he actually spend time with his friends? He never spent time with them for real. Like, dude, remember the, remember the last time he did... Remember the last time? I don't even remember the last time where he actually did that. Give us one moment. Anyway, anyways, folks, sorry. We're getting a knock. A totally from the co- for totally from Common Rider Silver. That's totally what was going on. Prime. I think they're gonna figure it out sooner or later. Eh, they're not. They totally are. <sighs> we just get. Eh. Don't worry, don't worry about it. They ain't gonna never know his true identity, so we're good. But by the way, like, really, it has, like, Demo, Demo never really spent time with any of his friends. You know, so he was so quick to, like, go, it's not because, of, it's not because of me, it's because of the black, it's because of the Bible black bitches. No, it's you, dude. You have a darkness within you that never got fixed. Because of the Titan shit within you. You never dealt with it. Fucking bitch ass motherfucker. You know, and all the weird shit where he's like telling us to lick his lick his brown starfish, I was like Okay, motherfucker I was like, hey motherfucker, what do you got going on? Like dude, why you want us to what? Like why the demo why the demo man and black bomb want us to like like ugh dude? Trust me, the only person that's the only person that's technically bi here and can switch her switch their gender is Melly, and she didn't even want any of that. I don't deal with I don't like Cyclops. I like my taste a little bit closer. Melly, come on, Melly, don't do it. Put your put your hand away from there. Why is your hand so soft? Hi. I use a lot of lotion. Yeah, I kind of know it. I bought, I bought that one for you for your birthday when you still mail. I didn't know you actually wanted to use it for this. Mm. There's a lot of, there's a lot about me you didn't know. Bullshit, bullshit, honey, bullshit. Hmm. Well, we should probably continue. And then you and me, we're going in. We're going in the hot tub. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Totally. Prime, are you getting some misses from Melly? It's the only person. I, it's the only one. She's one of the only few people I do get some misses for. You know what? I, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a thing, man. Psst. Just don't worry about it. Anyways, I'm going to divert everybody from this very unpleasant conversation, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not hurl in my own fucking mouth for five minutes. God damn it, you guys need to fucking chill. They never have any chill when they're around each other. It's like, god damn, they act like horny teenagers sometimes. <laughs> we love you guys, but really, you do act like horny teenagers. Yeah, fair enough. Totally fair. <sighs> Anyways, now that the horny brigade's finally done with their fucking antics, now we can actually get down to business on our side. So, since we moved everybody to the new higher havens, things have been going well. 
the bureaucrats kind of hate us still, like always. Um, you know, morale's at an all-time high. People have jobs. People and the poor are getting more food and more clothes and more more for more housing. I mean, the good shit, like really good shit. We ain't stiffing nobody with with the with the amount of money we're making. Every poor person in the higher, in the new higher havens actually has a house now, and the ability to go get a job, an ability to go get any kind of job they want. So yeah, that's good. And the little and the little lordlets, you know, the kids, they're learning a lot more uh, about magic. They're learning a lot about magic and how it's used, and a little bit of how their powers work. So we're doing pretty well over there. Good. I know making you guys my advisors was a good idea. <laughs> and, oh yeah, Anzang Anzang is helping out with any psychological things because, you know, he's a psychiatrist, so he's working out with them. And Harima is, Harima's actually got a dojo that also works as a freaking, as an art, as a art studio to draw manga. Oh, that's good. So yeah, our people like you know the beer, you know the other houses of the other houses of the other royal castles may hate us. Some of them trip out about the fact that we uh, willingly help a help a uh, human. But you know, I looked at them and said, "What do you motherfuckers do for the, what do you guys do in your fucking boiled goose?" Sitting there eating boiled goose, while we mu- while we say while we save not only their lives but your lives, you fucking rich assholes. And they were like, "How dare you?" And I just slapped them and said, "How dare I do this?" And I just came up in there and was like, I came up in there and punched them in the face. And I was like, "Who do you voodoo bitch?" <laughs> oh no, did you bust this? Was it the same dude? Yeah. But those motherfuckers need to, because those motherfuckers need to understand. You're the king, and what you say, and what you say in the high haven goes. Those those rich assholes need to understand one thing. You make the rules. They don't make the rules because they made the rules. We be at war with everybody, and they just and they just like they're like okay. They ain't even gonna say nothing. They can say they say a bunch of shit about you, but they can't. But they know, if you ever wanted to take them down, you could. They know that. I told them, you can say whatever you want about me, but if you want to fight me, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, come on, fight me. We're chaos lords. Fighting is what we do. Or are you idiot? I was like, are you bureaucrats too pampered to fucking fight one of the many, one of the few warrior, few one of the the few warrior families that are still. still that are still warriors. Oh, and the oh, and little lordlets love you, man. They do. Yeah, they think of you as a role model. They want to apply themselves, and that's why some of them want to be. That's why some of them want to be in the cha- the chaos troopers. They do. Mm-hmm. You push them forward and make them think that the, that they. Impossible as possible. Oh, bless their little hearts. They can be as powerful as me if they actually try. Hell, yeah, back in the day, I didn't know what I was doing. I just did it. And that's why everybody admires you. Including you. Well, oh, I love you. That's a whole different set of words. Mm, well, I can see you admiring a little bit of my, uh, my pecs a little bit. Mm, dear, right now. Hey, you, hey, you don't want that, you don't want that, you don't want to flip your hand where it need, where it needed not to be. I'm just, I'm just kind of adding it, I'm just adding to that, you know what I mean? <sighs> okay. Anyways, uh, any, 
we give any support to the Brotherhood or Odessa. And and double, we're getting your we're getting your stuff because you and Ron Giko are gonna be, you know. You and Ron Giko are gonna be busy, so we're uh but we wanna ask you, man, like we wanted to ask you, um, what do you what do you want? Because we always give you like Gatorade and liquid IVs, but we never ask you what do you like want drink wise. We just kinda just get a bunch of things from the we just get a bunch of things from the store and we don't know what you actually want. So, you know, it'd be a great time to you know, make a little list, you know, tell us what you need. And we we're not gonna do this for like money, we just do this for you because, you know, we're friends and stuff like that. I, and also, um, we were gonna, we weren't, we did want to take you to the inventory and, you know, chill, shoot the shit, and drink a little bit. But we may have to come back. We may have to come to Odessa and bring that shit to you because, you know, Ron Giku doesn't want to. Ron Giku doesn't want us to take you anywhere. She said, she said to us, and I quote, he, "You guys can still hang out with him, but it has to be, it has to be near the cell." And, and she said this to Melly. No touching him. Ron Giku, I don't want... I don't want double. I mean, y'all? It's okay if y'all want him, but... I don't want double like that. I got... I got prime. I don't need... I don't need double. Yeah, like... Okay. You guys... Okay, remember. We're not... She ain't originally from you guys' universe, so... You know... Double has, like, a sway over people, kind of, for any chick he wants, because, you know, universe and everything's connected, but we don't originally come from his universe, so, shit, our, our rules are a little different. And plus, me and Prime are my childhood friends, so, you can guess. Yeah, the old, the oldest fucking anime stereotype in the book. I hate I want to punch you, Megalo. I want to slug you. Liter literally, Millie. You could try, but you know how that's gonna end. Both of us are gonna, f <laughs> both of us are gonna be knocked down. And I don't want Prime to beat my ass, so we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. And that's a wise choice. <laughs> like honestly, you would, you would actually beat my ass though right I mean if you guys were sparring yeah I wouldn't um you may see Kamen Rider Silver on DC Universe Online if anybody wants if anybody's curious he'll have his own team hanging out with them but he might show but you know Kamen Rider Silver does work for us so he will show up he will show up if you call him just whistle you give her a little whistle, he'll come. And also, for any chicks out there that want, any chicks in the Double Zeta Breaker universe that want to get down with him, uh, he's taken. He's taken by his, he's taken by one of his, uh, one of his, one of his fellow writers, common writer, common writer beauty. You guys are, you and Melly are dorks. So are you guys. So are you fucking, so are you guys, technically. Oh, just, be, just because we spent like, just because back when we were kids, we spent like an hour playing the, playing that D&D &D game on the Sega Genesis while you and Melly were, while you and Melly were fucking making out. Yeah, that's it. like literally. We could never hang out with you, Prime, if if it meant you would tap Melly with you. You were always distracted. Well, I can't help it. It's, you know, when she, you know, when Melly wears her hair, and it's, when Melly used to wear her hair short, and it was just, I was like, <clears throat> can you blame me? Hormones just kicked in, you know. And I was like, God. Part of me was like, God. I was like, wow. And trust me, I love my. Trust me, I love my. I love my other wives equally. Don't even get. Don't even get me started on that. 
But, you know. But, you know. You guys had to, like, you guys had to, like, puberty wasn't a factor for both of us. Jesus. I remember that your dad and her dad would try to get you guys together. And, it, you know, and back when you were little, it wasn't really that. You guys weren't that receptive to it. Yeah, it was it was a lot like Swan Princess where you guys were like, where it's like, this is not my, this isn't my idea of fun. Y'all actually sung that one time too. Get up. Ah, because they did the they did the last part. She started out as such an ugly duckling, and then suddenly became a swan. You, you guys, you guys are assholes. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are such dicks. <laughs> See, but we love, but you know, we love you guys. We love our little fucked up family. <laughs> True that. We just love giving you guys a hard time. <laughs> but we don't mean it, buddy. Yeah, it's just, it's going to take again, it's going to take a lot of getting used to again for... Any of this to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, we... I did do it rather abruptly, didn't I? Hey, 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 hey. Melly, don't blame... Don't blame yourself for our discomfort. <laughs> it's just something me and Overlord just gotta deal with. Yeah, we're proud that you went back to your... We're proud that you went back to your original form. To be honest... To be honest, you look better... As yourself. And not as Mel. Because we knew that was like a mask you put up. This is the real you. And we're happy that you're back to being you again. Catty comments and all. You guys really, you guys really mean that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. We're still a fucking family no matter what. Hey. Hey. Here. Got one of my own handkerchiefs. You can have it. Thank you. Hey. Hey, while we're sitting here. Do y'all remember that time where, like, we were, like, the Marzipan's machine, like, during uh, one of the Homestar Runner cartoons where Mars, where freaking Bubs and, like, Coach V was trying to, like, Coach V was trying to call Marzipan to, like, get her out for a date. Like, don't tell Homes, like, Bubs is like, don't tell Homestar. Dude, if I was, if I was Homestar, man, if I was, like, if I was me inside Homestar, I'd be like, Buzz, what the f- What you doing? What you doing talking to my mom's of hand? What you doing talking to my mom's of hand? Oh, nothing, Holmes. I didn't mean nothing by it. You better not. I'm gonna kick you in- I'm gonna use my strong legs to kick you in the balls, Bubs. You better chill. And Coach Z, Coach Z's always hitting on my of hand, but she's always rejecting it. So I wouldn't have nothing to worry about, but Bubs is a whole different fucking story. So, if you were a Homestar, you'd be worried about Bubs cucking you if you were a Homestar. Kinda. Hmm. I mean, I don't know about Marzipan, but with me, you have nothing to worry about. And with Mayu and Miss Enigma and Mousley, you have nothing to worry about. I know. I know I don't have nothing to worry about. If I was a Homestar, I'd probably worry. I mean, we don't, we don't know if a Homestar got, like, any tools down there. I mean, neither. We don't know if Marsham Hand does either. True. True. Very true. <laughs>